Hey, what's up? Welcome or welcome back. If you're new, my name is Lena, aka Frumpy Fit. I'm an online weight loss coach who's dedicated to calling out all the BS in the fitness industry and providing you with accurate fitness, nutrition, and weight loss information. Today, we are talking about some new science that people are claiming means exercise is not effective for weight loss. Now, I wanted to make sure, I've been wanting to talk about this for a while, I wanted to make sure that I had some time to sit down, read through it, really digest it, and see what we can actually take from this science. Because something science loves to do is be dramatic. You wouldn't think so, but a paper will come out with a crazy headline that makes you think a certain way, and then you actually read the paper, and you're like, wait a second, this is not as dramatic as you all were making it seem. Scientists like to throw around words like significant. It's statistically significant, but like, even something that's statistically significant may mean absolutely nothing in real life. But before we dive into the science, this video is sponsored by Magic Spoon. You guys, I've talked about this cereal before, you might already know, but this cereal is absolutely incredible. You can see this one. My husband opened it from the bottom because he was so excited. These are our two favorite flavors, fruity and frosted. This one tastes like marshmallows, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Why is this cereal so great? Why don't I tell you? Overall, in general, this cereal has zero grams of sugar, except for the honey nut flavor, which has one gram of sugar. 13 to 14 grams of protein per serving and only four to five grams of net carbs per serving. Not only do I absolutely love having a bowl of this for breakfast, my husband and I are both encouraging each other to work on our mindful eating practice. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch this video, but essentially we talk through some prompts to help us make more informed and mindful decisions about the food that we're eating. And we often find ourselves, especially my husband eating this, before bed. Having something like this that's sweet, but also has 13 grams of protein in it is really gonna help set you up for success when it comes to like that late night snacking, at least for us. So if you wanna try Magic Spoon today, make sure you click the link in the description. You can build your very own variety box and use this discount code to get you $5 off. In your variety box, you can choose between their best selling flavors, including cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, cookies and cream, and maple waffle. Plus they even have some other flavors too. You could also add their cookies and cream or cocoa peanut butter flavored cereal bars to your variety box. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if for whatever reason you don't like the product, you can get your money back, no questions asked. And for any of my Canadian or British viewers, Magic Spoon is now shipping to Canada and the UK. So again, click that link in the description and use this discount code to get $5 off your variety pack. Thanks Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video. So you may have started to see people on social media, probably TikTok and in particular. I've seen it the most on TikTok and Instagram of people talking about how exercise is no longer effective for weight loss. Like we were lied to. It's not true. You should only focus on diet. Exercise is a waste of time for weight loss, whatever else people are saying. And what I've noticed for my however many years in the fitness industry, most myths because I would classify this as a myth, is born out of actual real science. It was just misinterpreted incorrectly. So the absolute best way I've seen this explained in like the most easy to understand way is this Instagram post from examine.com. I have raved about examine.com literally nonstop on this channel. I think it's been a while, but I'm still a fan girl. They are primarily known for being a great place to research supplement ingredients. That's what I've always used them for, but they also write some great blogs on stuff, including this new science that came out. So you can see from the graph, it's basically concluding that the more exercise you do, the lower your BMR is gonna be, and the less exercise you do, the higher your BMR is gonna be. And the citation they've got down here in the corner of that image is, from 2021, so this is relatively new. Now the immediate phrase that comes to mind is like metabolic adaptation, and I've talked about that before on my channel, especially in this weight loss plateaus video, but essentially what that is is over a longer period of time, your metabolism can adapt to being in a calorie deficit, either too big of a deficit or just being in one for too long, even if it's more moderate. This makes weight loss more challenging because your body is just burning less calories. In order to be in a calorie deficit, burning more calories is very useful. So you could be in a situation where like, you feel like you're tracking all your numbers, you feel like you should be in a deficit, but you're actually not because your body's like, whoa, 
we don't like this. And I think most often people are blaming this on diet when people take their calories way too low in terms of what they're consuming every day. And we think of it more as like a long-term thing, like I mentioned before. But this is saying basically, this is happening immediately. If you are burning a lot more calories through exercise, your body will immediately burn less by minimizing calories burnt from BMR. Now, as a recap, I've talked about this before, but there are essentially four ways that your body can burn calories. BMR is the biggest chunk, and that's actually you doing nothing. Just the amount of calories that your body needs to function and keep you alive. We also have the thermic effect of food, which is how many calories your body is using to digest the food that you're eating. And the last two are related to movement, which almost everybody is associating with the way to burn calories. And those two categories are essentially what you burn from actually exercising, and then also your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, thermogenesis, thermogenesis. These are things like me just moving my hands in this video, brushing my teeth, like, you know, whatever. There's a lot of movements that we do in the, in the day that we don't classify as exercise. And when you go to calculate how many calories you're burning, for example, if you use the strategy that I talk about in this video, you plug in your height, age, weight, and sex to determine what your BMR is. That's the first step. And what people are kind of getting at with this new science is that that number may not actually be accurate depending on your level of exercise on a daily basis. But I want to talk about the actual impact of this. If we pull up this image again from examine.com on Instagram, you can see kind of this middle tiny text. It says for every 100 kcal burned through exercise, BMR dropped by 28 calories. So does this mean that exercise is actually useless? Not really, because what's happening is you're, even though your BMR is technically decreasing, you're still netting 72 calories that you wouldn't have burned without the exercise. A conclusion that examine.com made in their article on their website, which I'll link in the description, is that this just adds to the body of literature that points to exercise as a sole method for weight loss being not that effective. Early on in my YouTube channel days, I made this video about how to lose weight with no exercise. Spoiler, that entire video was me basically saying like, I really think you actually should exercise, but here's how to optimize if you really can't exercise. But you'll never catch me making a video about how to lose weight without making some sort of diet intervention. And when I say diet intervention, I don't mean going on a diet. When I say the word diet, I mean like all of the food that you eat makes up your diet as a whole. Because there are a lot of factors that go into weight loss that aren't just related to this study that do show that only focusing on exercise may not be that effective, including the fact that oftentimes when we exercise, our appetite increases. So if you're not paying attention to the food you're eating, you may just eat more without realizing it because you're just following your appetite as you've always done, but you don't realize that your body is now signaling you to eat more. And if you're weight training, because weight training is such a good exercise, you may then be building some muscle, which could show the scale going up, which may cause you to panic and think you're gaining fat instead of losing fat the way you want to. There are a lot of factors involved. And I have a free masterclass called The One Thing You Need to Achieve Sustainable Weight Loss where I talk about minimum effective dose. Your strategy while losing weight should be to figure out how to do the least to get the most. So if you're someone who doesn't have a huge bandwidth for a weight loss strategy, it's a good idea to start with diet rather than exercise. Obviously, if you have the bandwidth for exercise, if you have the means, it's a good idea to include some, but maybe this information can help you make smarter decisions about where to start first. And something that caught my eye when I was reading through the examine.com article was that they found that people with a higher body fat percentage actually have a higher degree of this compensation when they add exercise into their routine. And they don't know why this happens. They guessed as to a couple of reasons why, but it doesn't necessarily matter why, but if you're somebody who has a larger amount of weight to lose, it may be even more important for you to prioritize diet first. And I don't know if I'm remembering this correctly, but I think John from Obese to Beast has mentioned that when he first got started, he really just focused on diet and exercise came later. And again, I'm not like demonizing exercising and saying that you shouldn't do it. There's so many benefits to exercise beyond just how many calories you're burning that like everyone should still be exercising. And like I mentioned, you're still getting a net of about 72 calories despite the adaption to your BMR. I literally just stopped recording and broke down my filming setup, but I wanted to add that 
that 72 calories or whatever number it is, that's not going to be exact for everybody. As I mentioned, people with a higher body fat percentage may have a higher degree of compensation when it comes to this stuff. But even if your compensation is higher, the principles are still gonna be the same. So even if you net less calories overall, you're still gonna be burning more than if you didn't do the exercise at all. Okay, just wanted to add that in. But I'm just trying to hammer home that if you have that limited bandwidth and you're trying to figure out where to start, diet is a really good spot to focus. And the last thing that I wanna to touch on about this topic is if you are somebody who is tracking their calories, trying to figure out how many calories you burn every day, and you're like, what the heck? Now does this mean that all of my calculations are inaccurate and I can't use any of them to figure out how much of a deficit I should be in or how many calories I should be eating? Also pump the brakes. Calculating your calories, no matter what strategy you use to do it, is a guess. It's an educated guess and it's just supposed to serve as a starting point. So when somebody calculates their calories using the method that I talk about in this video even, the point is not to say, okay, I found the exact number that's gonna work for me, now I just have to do it. It's about just giving yourself somewhere to start and seeing how your body reacts from there. And if you're somebody who is using something like this to actually track how many calories you're burning every day, I've talked about this before in my I think I called it why fitness trackers are messing up your weight loss, that you definitely shouldn't be doing that. And it's not because of this new science that's out, it's just because, again, none of this is an exact science, even though we really try to make it out to be. There are so many factors involved, like I mentioned before. If you wanna hear all my reasoning of why you should not be using this to make any sort of like real hardcore decisions about how many calories you're burning, you can check that video out. But I guess this new information is just another reason why we should not be using that as a tool when it comes to weight loss. So if you've heard about this information from somebody else or from this video now myself, and you're like, oh my gosh, like, what do I do? Do I need to change anything up or should I keep doing what I'm doing? Here's the thing, like this study and all this research coming out is cool. It's very insightful, but it doesn't really change the foundations of weight loss. Exercise still does help you burn more calories in a day than you would if you didn't. A calorie deficit is still required for weight loss. The fundamentals still matter. And I still believe as always, that you should focus more on the behaviors, getting really solid with those than the outcomes because all of this noise that happens, this new science, the scale not doing what you want it to do for one week, seeing other people losing weight so much faster than you, all of that noise doesn't matter if you're focusing on the behaviors putting your head down and just focusing on what you need to do and having a little bit of faith. If you feel like you need some support on how to be in a calorie deficit in general, definitely check out my video all about calorie deficits so you can understand them a little bit more, but don't stress. Let me know what you guys think about this new science that's coming out. Did you hear people making crazy claims about it or is this the first you've heard of it? And how does it impact your weight loss strategy moving forward? Don't forget to also like and subscribe. You can also follow me on TikTok and on Instagram and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.